Hello traveling world. Uh, today I'd like to cover a different topic, the one that I'm uh, one that I, I don't see enough of. Uh, and basically I'd like to cover today basic uh, home defense, if you will. Now, this is not about uh, the use of deadly force. Actually what it is is to avoid that encounter. Very, very important that it is better to avoid than confront or be put in a position to where you have to confront. Refuse to be a victim. A terrific course and uh, honestly uh, a practice that I have done for years. As you know, I'm in a wheelchair. Puts me at a distinct disadvantage for movement. Um, so I, I actively avoid uh, situations that might turn bad. Simple things that you can do, like lock your basement doors at night. I put a lock on my hitch rather than a pin and a, and a clevis. I just put a lock in there. Why do I do that? Seems like a small thing. People that I have found over the years, people do very strange things. Uh, and pulling that pin out for whatever reason might even be at a campground, a good campground. Kids are fooling around, somebody's missing a clevis, who knows. My thought, avoid that issue, put a lock on it. I'll show you here. Uh, simple things. Uh, just doing simple things like that avoids the opportunity to have bad things happen. So, refuse to be a victim. I had the, ins I had the, the, the occasion that I was in a parking lot in a manufacturing area. And I thought, gee, it would be nice to have a pizza delivered. It took me 20 minutes to explain to the pizza place who was in town where I was and how to get that pizza to me. What I didn't have was a street address that they could plug into the GPS. It was in a parking lot, it was building 10, it was such and such an intersection. I knew what town I was in, I even knew the zip code. Um, but 20 minutes of talking to them to get them enough information they understood to figure out where I was. So, know where you are and know how to explain that to a person on the phone. 911, I'm in a forest, uh, it's got green trees, it's on a dirt road, it's off a main road. A sheriff's office is not going to be able to do much with that. Yes, if you have a cell phone and it has a GPS locator and it is a modern 911 facility, they might be able to triangulate on your phone. They might. But, for instance, this uh, fall, we're in a national forest off Route 89A in Arizona, uh, just north of... <laughs> good question. Where were we north of? Jacob Lake. What, northwest of Jake, Jacob Lake. Quarter mile in on Fire Road 248, east side of 248. When we stopped, that if something went wrong, whatever it was, I could call a 911 dispatcher and explain to where I was and that I needed assistance. He happened to be there during hunting season, so there were a lot of people running around with guns. That's why we were only a quarter mile in. I didn't want to go any farther in for fear that there would be issues. So we only went a quarter mile in, found a nice place to turn off. Picture here, nice place. Um, Fire Road 248, I recommend it. Uh, Nobody bothered us. Actually, the hunters helped us get out of there because I had my dolly. I was trying to figure out how to turn around. <laughs> Took the dolly off, turned the coach around, and they helped us swing the dolly behind it and hook it up. Nice guys. Another thing I have, uh, because communication is key. I happen to have a ham license. Uh, Whiskey 4 Juliet Charlie Hotel. And I have a nice Kenwood uh, two-meter band, handheld. Uh, and with that, with the proper knowledge, uh, that little radio, I've been able to talk to people in Australia, and England, uh, worldwide, with the proper knowledge. So you can find, uh, and this is a different video, uh, but you can find uh, help even on a ham radio. But your friend is your cell phone. So what do you do? Uh, and what don't you do? If you pull into a place, uh, Walmart parking lot, and you're going to stay overnight, something I have never done, uh, but if you're going to do that, um, and you see signs saying security cameras, 
security cameras are everywhere. There's razor wire on top of the, the uh, storage areas for Walmart. Probably not a good place to be. That stuff is not cheap, and they bought it for a reason. That's not just standard policy. Be, be aware of your surroundings. If, there's a, if you're in a, a national forest or a national park or BLM land, and there's a lot of trash around, empty beer bottles, bags, you know, all number of manner of stuff, it means it's a well-frequented place by not your traditional campers. If you pull into a, a, a space and you, the hair on the back of your neck uh, goes up because you're spooked about something, um, we have evolved that method of saying, move on. We've got, we've got a mobile home, uh, or motor home, if you will. Um, we can find another place. That said, um, when you arrive at a place, know where you are. And I've said that before, that you basically have to really know where you are. State, county, city, if, there's, if it's an incorporated area, uh, and to be able to describe pretty succinctly where you are in that space. If you're off a main road, know what the mile marker is. Uh, I'm at, you know, mile marker 120. I'm just south of mile marker 120 to the east side of the road, a quarter mile in on this dirt road. It'll give the, it'll give responders at least a leg up on where you might be and, and we'll get them there quicker. Uh, so it is important to know where you are. You say, well, of course you don't want state you're in. Yeah. Not always. If you travel enough, you may not know what state you're in. Uh, I've traveled enough to know that there are spaces that I was not really sure where exactly I was, what state, what county. So again, cell phone is your friend. If you have a signal, you can figure out where you are and even get GPS coordinates. Write them down somewhere. Put them on a sticky. Uh, handy information to have just in case. Here's your cell phone. Uh, Google Maps here, just press Google Maps. If this is where you are, then you figure out, look around, is this, is this where you are? Put your finger on the dot and the GPS will bring up their nearest address. So you're near 507 Ocean Avenue, scroll down a little bit, there's the address and there's the Latin long of your position. And that information is key. Uh, to relaying that, if you relay that to 911, they'll know exactly where you are. You say, oh, I can't be bothered with all that. When things go wrong, you don't have the time. You really need that information. And in the middle of the night, you get up on the door. Shades up, outside lights on. Not inside lights on, outside lights on. Take a look, see who it is. If it's somebody asking for help, Say, I'll call 911 for you. What's your name? Don't, under any circumstances, open the door. One of my projects is to install lighting all the way around the coach so that when you get that in the middle of the night, you can flick a switch and 360 lights come on. Bad guys typically don't like light. Uh, they want to operate in the dark or in limited visibility. So... Get as much light outside as you can. Inside lights, you can leave off. If, if somebody, if you hear somebody work in your lock at night, again, lights on outside. And the only communication should be, what's your name? I'll call 911 for you. Again, then you need to know where you are and how to describe what's going on to the operator. And they'll stay on the phone with you until somebody arrives, typically. Other things, um, notice Basic things, a record in your mind, basic things about the person, hair color, hairstyle, straight, curly, whatever, what they're wearing, color of shirt, type of shirt, pants, shoes, see what kind of shoes they have on. Why is that important? They could throw the shirt off. Odds are they're not going to throw their pants off, but typically people will not change their shoes. So it's just a nice identifier for people. Um, I've had enough instances where I Unless I consciously look at those items, I have no idea what a person's wearing. Absolutely not. I really have to sit there and say, okay, 
blue eyes, fair skin, straight black hair, white t-shirt, jeans, yellow sneakers. Just, it, it's a good thing to have in your mind. Uh, so you can describe. Because that person knocking may run off. And they might need help. Still, they may, they may truly need help. Let the police help them. Um, I've had that instance of the knock in the middle of the night. And it, it uh, is very disconcerting. Uh, and you have to, you know, you, whatever you were doing, we happen to be watching TV, but whatever you're doing, it's, it's jarring. And you have to reassess, think it through. Okay, where am I? What's going on around me? What, what vehicles are moving? What noises have I heard? Who's moving around the coach? It really, you, you have to go through that process. And it takes a while. You know, lights on outside, take a look, see what's going on. Assess, you know, what is it that's happening here? You know, what is that person's motivation? It's important. So, again, refuse to be a victim. Know what's going on around you. In a space, if you see sketchy people kind of milling around, uh, and, and you watch this stuff on TV when somebody's, you know, some, some crime has happened, watch the perpetrator. They will scope out their victim. And if you, if you are not aware of your surroundings, then that's their key. They, they, they don't want to be recognized. They will, they will come in. But you will see them surveilling the spot. If you see that happening to you, somebody's walking around, checking you out, then move on. Be aware of, of again, what's, if you're sitting in a restaurant, kind of be aware of things. Where are the exits? You know, if I need to leave, how do I get out of here? How do I get my family out of here quickly? Especially me in the wheelchair, that's not always an easy task because I don't get, I don't fit between tables easily. So I always have to think about where am I sitting? Where are the exits? If I need to leave, I mean, strange things happen in public spaces. And if I need to leave with my family quickly, how do I do that? Just think it through. You say, oh, I can't be bothered. You're living in a world that, that uh, you're always worried. Not really. It becomes routine. It becomes just one more thing you do, like putting your wallet in your pocket. Go into a space, you just check it out. Okay, where are the exits? You know, how do, and how do I get there quickly? It could, be a, it could be a kitchen fire. How do I get out of here? You know, I go this way. And discuss it with your family members in the RV or, for that matter, anywhere at home. If we need to get out of the house quickly, this is the way we, way we go. Uh, we go out this way. If that way is blocked, then we go this way. And how do you communicate? Do we have a cell phone signal? Okay, good. If I don't, is there a repeater nearby that I can hit with my radio? And if so, what are the emergency frequencies in this area? How can I find, how can I get to the police or the forest ranger or whoever might be listening? How do I get to them? Again, different topic, but very good source, ham radio. So I just, I wanted to cover some of that, some of those things. When we, we boondock, I'm always on a forest road or, you know, some, some place away from people because I'm more comfortable uh, that way. If we're staying in a populated area, usually we're in a campground uh, that's generally secure. I have used um, some of the services to where they, you have f free boondocking. Typically, they, they will be gated spaces. It'll be a commercial establishment with a gate. You come in at the end of the workday, they lock you in, um, like we stayed at a wildlife preserve uh, here in New Mexico. It was a terrific stop. Empty parking lot, locked the gate behind us, gave us an emergency contact if we needed to get out to call the person that was nearby. Uh, that could open the gate for me. Uh, you need to, to understand your space and be secure. I, and I sleep actually pretty soundly. Uh, typically, I don't sleep at truck stops. Uh, I don't sleep at um, rest stops. I will, I, will, I, will, I will rest at a rest stop, but I won't sleep there. Um, truck stops are just a problem, especially in the back. Um, there, there are all manner of things going on at truck stops that, that I just don't want to know about. So I, I, I'll stop there, I'll rest, um, you know, 
have a meal, take a break, and move on. So, the other, another thing, and a lot of this has to do with planning. I plan my routes, and I arrive early. So if things aren't what I expect them to be, I get plan B. I can keep going. So we try to stop maybe by 3 o'clock, ideally by 2. But, you know, if we get a late start by 3, 3.30, so we still have daylight to go find someplace else if it doesn't work out. And that's important. Always leave yourself room to make another choice. So, anyway, I just want to share that with you. This is an excellent course, uh, and I highly recommend it. Uh, and it is it is uh, actually designed by the NRA. This is their this is their core mission is education. Uh, and of course, there are the other the other courses. And this is um, basic personal protection, which uh, has many good ideas, uh, but that does include the use of uh, deadly force. That said, safe camping. Hope you have fun, a great time. Um, we've got another bright, sunny day here in Florida, having a great time. So, again, if you like this, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Comments, criticisms, it's all welcome. I'm uh, always learning uh, new things. Every time I get, every time I give a course like this, um, I learn many new things. And that, that helps me and ultimately will help you. Thank you.